Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Uh, if you're new here, I normally do different challenges and vlog my adventures. Um, I'll put those in the description box below. But today I'm doing something a little bit different and I'm going to talk to you about my experience with the Open University. So I'm actually halfway through completing a degree in physics with the Open University. I debated for quite a long time before I began my studies, wondering actually if the Open University was for me. I'd heard a lot about it through friends, I'd seen adverts for it, I'd read a few bits on the internet, but I hadn't actually seen a wealth of information, and I think had there been a video like this out there before I studied, it would have helped me make a decision quicker, so hopefully you'll find this video useful. So the Open University is actually a web-based university, so you may already know this, having clicked a link about it. Uh, what I love about it is that rather than a traditional university type, it caters for a whole host of different people, so it could be that you have a dis disability and are unable to attend a regular university, you could have personal circumstances which made you unable to attend a standard university. You could be a parent. For myself in particular, I do full-time work, so I wanted something that meant I wouldn't have to give up my job because I absolutely love it. It meant that I could do this to complement my work and to go alongside what I already do. So a standard full-time degree comprises of 360 credits, which is typically studied by a university student, 120 credits per year, across the three years. So for myself, I decided to do part-time study to work alongside my job and other commitments, which means that at 60 credits per year, it will take me six years to complete a degree, which works absolutely fine for myself. You can pick how many credits that you want to do. If you have the capacity and you have the time to do full-time, then 120 could be for you. I personally started off on 30 credits per year. So a little bit around, I hadn't studied for a little while, I wanted to sort of ease myself in gently, but currently I study 60 credits per year, as I've said, but you can pick 30, 60, 90, anything up to the 120. So a huge advantage the Open University has versus a standard university is that you have a lot more choice over which modules you actually select. So some are mandatory. So for example, with myself in physics, obviously there's a lot of maths modules and a lot of like basic foundation work that you absolutely have to complete. It's mandatory for all science courses. But along the way, you can pick things that are relevant to yourself. So, for example, for me, I've picked a lot of the particle and astrophysics part of things versus any other choices I could have had. So if you've recently finished school or studying of any sort of kind, then you may well find that you could go pretty much into a 60, 90 or 120 credit module. However, I actually picked 30. So I wanted to study. I didn't want to just do a short course of 10. I wanted to do actual studying but I needed to get back into the swing of things. So I did find it a little bit difficult, actually, the first month or two to get into the rhythm, to find my pace, to find a study sort of schedule and a place in the house that suited me. Um, I'm really glad I picked 30 though, because it was a good balance of enough so that it contributed towards my degree, but not so much that I felt really pressured or you know, I had to all of a sudden be fantastic and do tests and things, which, as I said, I hadn't done in a really long time. So I've spoken about some advantages the Open University has. A huge one for myself and for a lot of other people is that you're not paying a £9,000 per year course fee up front. Uh, it costs an awful lot less than that because obviously the overheads are much smaller. So when I've done a 30 credit module, costs will vary. I mean, I live in Wales, so the fees for you could be very different, but it's cost around four to £400. When I've done a 60 credit module, it's been a bit more like 800, 900 or slightly more. So I found it a lot more manageable cost-wise because it's not a huge chunk or a massive amount over the three years. You can pay per module, which is far more manageable. I would definitely recommend as well checking with your employer because in some cases you may be eligible for a grant or they may be able to help pay towards your tuition. It's also worth having a look which area you live in or which region, so for example myself in Wales, because as I said before there are quite a few payment options and there are quite a few grants available. How does it all begin? What happens once you enrol? How does it all get started? It will vary depending on the course you do, but typically you get sent some materials shortly before your course starts. So I think mine's been on average about three to four weeks beforehand. So it's really great. You can check you have all your materials and start to flick through them. So at this point, you don't necessarily have to be an expert, but you can read the sort of chapter titles and get the gist of what it is you're going to be studying. Also, shortly before your course starts, you're assigned a tutor. So you're put into a tutor group with several other people from different parts of the country. Uh, this tutor typically sends you an email so that you have their contact details. They'll give a short introduction about themselves and sometimes ask that you give the same back. 
and you normally have to submit something called a dummy assignment. So it's not actually for credit at all, it's just to check that you can send a document to your tutor and that your different computers are compatible. Once the website's open, you actually get access to some forums. So there'll be an overall sort of umbrella forum for everybody on that course, but you also have one for your relevant tutor group. So it's really useful whilst you can't actually post questions, kind of obviously, um, that are assignment questions or going to be in the exam, etc. It's a really great place if you need clarity on something, if you're having a problem and need the advice of a wider audience, or just generally if you want to meet people who are like-minded and on the same course as you. So an absolutely essential tool that I use would be the study planner that you get once the website opens. It's the first page that you come to on the website. I find this extremely useful. So it's a breakdown. You can either view it over a course of five weeks, so it shows you in the near future what's happening, um, or you can actually view details for the entire year of what it is week by week you're going to be studying. Um, again, I find this really useful. I haven't really had that before in a school or college, so I didn't have an exact breakdown week by week of what I was doing. But what I've done in the past, which has worked really, really well, is to compare my study planner with my work planner. So are there any clashes? Is it ever really busy in work and there's gonna be a huge assignment? If so, it means just I can match and plan my time really well. Uh, equally, if I know coming up there's going to be some really, really heavy stuff going on in work, it means that I can do slightly less university work. So I can either do more beforehand so that I don't fall behind, or I can make sure I do what's on the planner, but possibly leave some other materials if there's no pressing deadline for after a big moment in work. Being able to know massively in advance when you're going to be busiest or when you have crucial exam times or assignments due, knowing in advance is super helpful to plan your life. So what's an actual week like? So we've had our materials, we've got a tutor, we know what we're gonna do. It will vary on the course you do. At the moment, I'm doing two 30 credit modules to equal the 60. On the one hand side so far, it could just be that you read for the week. So it'll tell you, for example, make sure that you study chapters one and two. So you read through chapter one and two and make notes or digest that information in whichever way is your study preference. Like I've said before, I'm doing science, so I wouldn't know what you'd have to do for history, geography, etc. I'd imagine it shouldn't be too dissimilar. Um, so on the one hand, I've got a course that's just been pretty much reading so far, but in the mathematical and statistical module that I'm doing, there's been video clips to watch, podcasts, there's been a computer program for me to download and familiarise myself with. It's an algebraic programming program. Uh, so it really will depend on what you study, but a typical week is normal reading set chapters, watching clips, interactive material as well. So in some courses I've done, although not this year, I've been sent a CD-ROM or you can download some material from the internet site that you get as well. So sometimes there's been interactive activities or games or things that you have to play or like puzzles. A module I'm doing this year actually doesn't have an end of unit exam. It's going to be comprising of TMAs, which are tutor marked assignments. So you can either post those off via snail mail or you can, and this is the most common way I'd imagine, you can submit your assignment electronically and then it's marked by your tutor. So it's like they go and paint and do arrows and can type in feedback, etc., which is wonderful. So you really know for the next time through that feedback how you can improve. There are some ICMAs, so a lot of acronyms here, but computer marked assignments, which are like little quizzes. So they don't always necessarily go towards your overall score, although they sometimes can but it's a great way to make sure that your understanding is on track and that you're starting to think in the right way, your knowledge is there, etc. So a big way in which you're assessed and gain credit is through end of unit exams. So as I said, of the two modules I'm doing, one of them has no exam, the other one does. I kind of picked it that way because I figured I could do two modules alongside each other. If both had an exam, I may have found it a bit difficult but because one will have revision and one won't, the workload should be a bit more spread. So exam can sometimes be the number one thing that you're assessed on and that will give all of your grade, which is your overall examinable score, so your OES. The other way that you're tested would be, for example, your TMAs. So the exams really aren't anything to worry about. As I've said before, I hadn't studied for a while, so therefore I hadn't done an exam in quite a long time, but I really needn't have worried. You're given all the support in the world. Your tutor will help you prepare yourself if you, have, if you feel like you need their help. You are given allotted time as well. so. On the study plan you get at the start of the year, um, quite a lot of the time at the end is given towards revision. There are past papers available, so you can either buy them from the website there, like dirt cheap, or you can find some things on the internet, or again, your tutor might be able to provide you with some materials. As well, because throughout the year you're submitting TMAs and ICMAs and all these different things, you will know how far off the mark you are. So if you're getting low scores in those, then you need to revise really hard or you've got some work to do or you need to kind of maybe up your regime. But if you've been doing well on those, it's usually a really good indicator that you're going to do well in the exam in turn. 
So here are my pros and cons. So, so far I've spoken about a few advantages. Um, so like I said, the first one is because you can plan your own time, it's much easier to fit this in versus a standard university if you have personal circumstances, perhaps a disability, if you are a parent, if you, like me, do full-time work. You can really use the study planner and all the open university materials to plan your time and be able to study when it's convenient to do so. As I mentioned before, another huge advantage the OU has is that you can pick most of your own modules. So again, there will be some that are mandatory, but you can really pick the subject matter that appeals to you most. Cost is a huge factor. It's not £9,000 or perhaps even more per year. You can pay per module, and like I said, you could even do 30 or 60 a year if that suits you financially. And remember, you'll be able to work alongside this. In terms of cost as well, there's no actual need to leave your house, pretty much apart from the exam sort of period where you may have to travel to a, an assessment centre. They're normally put in your region though, so you, know, you don't have to go 100 miles or 200 miles or anything crazy. Uh, but because you're not, you know, you're not paying for parking, you're not paying for petrol, you're not having to buy lunch on campus or anything, that saves a lot of money too. There's been some years where around the time the course starts that I've been in holiday, um, so for example I have family in New York, and as long as you have the access to the internet, which is pretty much everywhere these days, you can start your course. You can read your books online in PDF format. There's actually a really good app called OU Anywhere, which means that on your mobile device or tablet or whatever device that you have, you can actually access your books, download materials, download videos. So if you know you're going on a long train journey and will be offline, or flying, or like I said, if you know you're going abroad, you can use a combination of the app than the internet when you have it to be absolutely bang up to date with what you need to get done. As for cons or any disadvantages, I suppose that there is the whole social side. So you have a tutor, you have a tutor group, you can join Facebook groups. A lot of people make Facebook groups for the module that you do. Uh, I guess the only downside would be that, you know, if you were sort of 17, 18 or young and looking to sort of do freshers week or go partying or live in a flat with different flatmates and things, you don't really get that with the OU. So if you are looking to develop your social skills, if you're looking to make sort of lifelong friends or push yourself out of your comfort zone or move away, then that won't really offer that for you. But as I've said, you know, that's where the standard university could take over. But I've already kind of outlined what advantages the open university would have and what sort of people would benefit from that. The only other disadvantage would be um, you may struggle if you're not a very self-motivated person. So give yourself a break when you start if you are going back to studying and haven't been for a while. So, for example, in my case, don't expect to just be able to pick it up like that. Um, there were moments where I'd sit and stare at the same bits of paper to start with, or I'd think to myself, oh, I'm going to do four hours studying, and then my dog would come in and look cute, and I'd be like, oh. Um, or somebody would phone me, a friend would ask me out for a drink or something. Um, so, yeah, so don't be too hard on yourself if it does take you a while to sort of find your rhythm and really get into a study zone like I said, um, to find a place in the house that works for you or to, you know, be able to find your studying style. If that takes you a while, don't worry, it's perfectly normal. So there we have it. That was my guide to whether you should or shouldn't start with the Open University. I hope it's provided some guidance or perhaps clarity for you. Um, as I've said, it will vary massively on which course you do. I can only speak from my experience and the science sort of courses. My experience overall has been wonderful. I'm really glad. I haven't looked back once and thought, oh, I don't know if I should jack it in or I'm gutted I started. Not once at all. I'm really, really pleased. It gives me something, and sort of an extra edge. It gives me something else to focus on. It complements work. It's not difficult. As I've said, the cost is manageable. So overall, I absolutely would recommend the Open University if it suits you and you are the sort of person I've described in advantages. Um, yeah, so I hope you found this video useful. Like I said, it is something really different to sort of challenges and adventures and stuff I've done before. Um, but yeah, if it goes to help somebody decide whether or not to start with the OU, then kind of my job is done. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I would really appreciate it if you've enjoyed this video, if you could go ahead and give it a like. That would really help out and it would really let me know whether I should do more of this sort of thing or perhaps talk more about my experience with you. So if you're interested in hearing more about the Open University or in fact you wanted to see some of my other material, like the adventures and challenges I've mentioned, then hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching. Bye.